Good evening, and we're live on the Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research Channel. And tonight, my guest is Elizabeth Lee Crowther from Spiritual Calling Radio, a psychic medium and an animal communicator who has written books and designed oracle cards. So how are you doing tonight then? Oh, thanks for having me on your show, Jackie. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm doing really well, thank you. Had a busy day as as normal, but the weather's very changeable here. But uh, yeah, we had a bit of a downpour earlier. But yeah, been really busy, um, doing lots of readings for people. I like to, you know, do my radio show on a Wednesday. That always keeps me busy. I've got lots of guests coming up, so always planning things like that. So yeah, yeah, it's good. That's fantastic. It takes well with all the social media side of things, doesn't it? I never really seem to get to grips with it, if I'm honest. All right, okay. <laughs> I do I do my best with social media and I, I do pop on. I don't probably do as many Facebook lives as I should. Uh just just for time reasons really. But yeah, it's good. I'm just kind of getting into Instagram at the moment as well, which uh there's always something new to learn, isn't there? Yeah, that's right. I've just started. I've actually just started on Instagram as well. Yeah, um, good. I've, I've just set up um, a paranormal thing on Instagram. I've had Instagram because I do photography, so I've had that a while. Oh, that would so, be perfect. Because I, I, you know, when I look at Instagram, most people have put really lovely pictures on there, like quite arty photographs or they've kind of thought about the photograph so if you're doing photography I would think it would be the perfect place for you yeah and you've got some really cool filters on there as well I haven't got that far with filters yet <laughs> I haven't, <laughs> haven't experimented yet with that one <laughs> so you can make things look really strange so yeah I like that <laughs> sounds good I'm right okay just, just excuse me right okay hopefully that works I always do that every time. Hello, Sarah. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Thanks to everyone for joining us. Um, we have a psychic medium tonight, and we may be doing some readings if you're very lucky. Um, so, where did your spiritual path start? More with the animal side of things, to be honest, Jackie. Um, when I was little, I've always had a real bond with animals. I've always been animal mad. And I just thought anybody who'd got a pet would understand how they are feeling, what they were thinking about. And I'd often have information uh, from my pets, from a child, about if they didn't feel very well or if they were hungry, for instance, all sorts of things. And I just thought that was normal, like everybody who owned a pet would have those experiences. Um, when I was about 10, I was riding a pony. I used to go horse riding. And I said to a friend who I was riding out with, oh, my pony says that he doesn't feel very well today. He's like he's hurt his leg. And uh, and she looked at me really strangely. And I said, well, don't you like get things when you're riding your pony, like what your pony's saying? And she went, no. And then I realized that other people weren't having those same experiences. And like anything else, as you get a little bit older and uh, you're a teenager, you like put it to one side. Although I did dabble a little bit with tarot in my teenage years and a, and a few paranormal things as well. But in the 80s, when I was a teenager, it was really hard to find out about things. There wasn't as many books. There was nothing on the TV about it. I mean, now you've just got a wealth of information. If you are curious or you're into this kind of spiritual stuff, you can go on YouTube, for instance. In the 80s, there was literally nothing. I think we'd heard of Doris Stokes, and that was about it. So it was really yeah. hard to, to find out. And um you know, I, I sort of ended up with like a normal job and working in schools. And a little bit later on down the line, um, I was introduced to computers and somebody was trying to teach me how you would search for something. That would have probably been in about 1999. And I'd got horses myself and, and all these feelings were coming back in with my own horses. And I remember thinking, I wonder if anybody else has that feeling or that connection with animals and I don't think it was Google then it was probably something like ask Jeeves or some yeah. you know something like yeah. that so I put it in and amazingly 
people were popping up mainly in America that they did pet psychic work, which they call animal communication. And I thought, wow, I wonder if this is what I've been doing all these years. And I'm a very skeptical person, even though I do all this stuff and I'm a great believer in everything. But I like things to be proved to me. So I know it's correct. And so what I started doing was doing readings for people like over an email but I was doing it for people like in America it was a couple of people in France because in my mind I was thinking I can't possibly know anything about that person or their pets so anything that is correct I know I couldn't have accidentally found out about it or my friend has mentioned something so I started doing that and at the same time I'd got a saddlery business so I used to sell horse riding equipment and people had often come in and say oh my horse is rearing or booking or there's been an issue and I'd say have you got a photograph like of your horse bring a photo of your horse next time and I'd stand there looking at the photograph and I go oh the reason your horse is doing that because he's got a bad tooth you need to get the horse dentist out to remove it and I'd kind of go like that and and I remembered that hang on they're not buying saddlery anymore. They're just coming in with all their photographs of their <laughs> animals so that I do a reading for them. And it, it became very apparent then that the saddlery side needed to go. And I was just to focus on the pet communication. And then really strange things happened. Once I kind of accepted that, I was asked to work on a case with a missing dog because a lady had cried so much when her dog had escaped and ran away on bonfire night that she went blind in one eye. She dislocated, um, I don't know, something could happen to a retina in her eye because she'd cried so much with the distress um, that I was asked to step in and help track the dog. And because she got this unusual story that she'd gone blind in one eye, like the newspapers latched on, um, uh, local TV news latched onto it. And to cut a long story short, somehow in, in the space of about 48 hours, I ended up on the Richard and Judy show on Channel 4 oh, doing amazing. this, tracking this dog. And they made a little film about it. And I was just propelled into this crazy world. I ended up at Russell Brand's house doing a reading on his cat. And it was like I was in this, like, other reality. And, like, my whole life changed so quickly when I just accepted that the path that I was meant to be on was to do psychic work with animals. Um, I then ended up on the radio a lot because I was very conscious that people would think, how on earth can anybody have a psychic link to a pet? How can anybody hear a pet talking, let alone tell somebody where they've wandered off to and where to find them? And I thought people are going to think I've lost the plot or I've had some kind of nervous breakdown here. You know, so what I did, I thought to myself, if I get on the radio and they can ring in, anybody you know whether they're skeptical or a believer they've got nothing to lose it's completely free tell me what your dog or your cat looks like and I'll give you a reading so I started on a local radio show doing that and the phone lines were literally jammed you know with people you know wanting to speak to me about their dog or their cat or their horse or any animal actually and then I would do the reading and it just became really popular but it was a great way to kind of prove to everybody that it really does work um and since then um i started noticing when i was doing pet readings then it opened me up to people in the spirit world coming through and so i started using unicorn cards and doing readings for people as well and then i ended up separating it either like have a reading for yourself or have a reading um, for your pet. But often when I do a reading, sometimes I do a bit of both. So it's just been a crazy roller coaster, really, over the last sort of, well, since about 2004, really, when it all sort of kicked off. And now I've written a book, done my own cards, got a regular show on the radio. And now it feels really normal, Jackie. You know, yeah. I mean? it just feels like, you, you know, your everyday life but when I look back to how it started I just think my god it's been it's been mad it's been so crazy 
And um, Reiki, you know, becoming a Reiki master, I think, really opened me up as well. So that also helped me, I think, along along the journey. It's absolutely amazing. Now, I first heard of you on the Pure Paranormal radio show with Tom and yes. Barry. Yeah, and brilliant. I just guys, heard your interview. Okay. What was it, about a year, year and a half ago? Yes, it would have probably, no, it would have been about two years ago, actually. Wow. Yeah, but, about two years ago. I just remember it from them because it was just so amazing, the fact that you could communicate with animals and the fact, I believe it was Tom's dog actually told you he had a flat tire on his car. Yeah, it was really mad because um, <laughs> he just, he just, I can't remember now if he just described the dog or he told or showed me a photo because an animal communicator works really well telepathically so you don't need to be with the animal but you need a photo or a good description just so you get a mental picture really so that you know you're linking into the correct animal and then I like to give something that the owner will understand very quickly on so I know I've linked into the right energy of that dog or whoever and yeah he said that and uh, I think he told me that he'd had a tooth out or something and or he needed a tooth out and then Tom said oh that's just happened that happened last week and um and even though those guys work in the paranormal industry and they're very well known and they have a fantastic show on Pulse Talk Radio they they're brilliant you could even tell that they were like a bit freaked out by it, you know. <laughs> but, oh, no, you that, that's mad because like you you do paranormal work all the time and I'm telling you about your dog. <laughs> that's the thing that's, you know, freaking you out at the moment. So um, it was quite funny. And uh, I, th- I think it was something about that, if I remember rightly, Tom was going to a wedding or he, he didn't want to go. And it was almost like, the dog had let a secret out and, and he was like trying to shush me up so it was quite it was quite funny that's it because the dog's not really going to hold back is it as a human won't sort of mention something because it might embarrass somebody but a dog will just go for it well i think it's like people some animals that you communicate with give you loads of information and just like people, some people are very open, very chatty. Some animals are more reserved. So you work a little bit harder to try and get more information from them. But I really believe that animals are meant to be with you. So it's not an accident that you've got the certain pet that you are with. I always think that you are healing each other, that there is a purpose behind it. You're not there uh, by chance. There is a real pure reason why you are sharing like your life with that particular soul you know so I do look into it quite deeply and I think animals are very selfless they can change our lives on many levels and often if you're meant to get whatever animal they find their way to you so you know often I'll do readings for people that have got rescue pets for instance and they'll go oh I wasn't going to get another dog but my friend told me that this dog had been abandoned and I couldn't resist you know and you get all these funny little stories about how people have ended up with their pets which is really lovely so I just feel very honoured to do this work and um, you know I don't feel that I'm a special kind of person doing it because I know for a fact that anybody who loves animals and is open-minded can do it. I've taught hundreds of people to do it, and I've never had anybody who hasn't been able to get a piece of validated information. It's not hard to do it, Jackie. It's probably easier than anybody would imagine. It's just trusting the information that comes in. Wow, that's amazing. Like I've, I've tried, like, mediumship I mean I am I'm doing development but and I do sense things with the dog but I yeah I can't imagine communicating with him obviously like he wants his dinner he'll tell me and certain things like that yes. or you know you, you understand the body language but to actually do you it on a different of, level is yeah, amazing you kind of have to take the logic out of it is your first step don't think I can't imagine doing it Because actually, where you get that information from is your imagination, because that's the part of the brain that's being accessed. And then I believe that we understand an animal's telepathic language 
and they understand ours. And then your brain has got to turn that information into something that you can make sense of. So, for instance, I don't think animals speak English, but your brain will give you the words in English. I don't know. They just speak animal. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. your brain understands it. I just think of it like this, like you've got like a little interpreter in your brain that the, their language telepathically comes to you and your brain converts that into something that you can understand yourself. So it could be words and phrases. It could be a vision or a, a picture of something. I love to say to you know animals what's your favorite thing to do and then I await the picture of what that might be it can be smell it can be taste it can just be a feeling and often it could be a feeling in your own body so for instance let's just say um, a horse had got a pain in his back you might kind of think oh I, I want to touch my back when I'm talking to this horse and then you would translate that over to the owner and say like have you been having your husband been having trouble with his back so i always say to people even in mediumship readings always watch a medium's hands because often their hands will tell a story before they've even opened their mouth so often you'll see psychics and mediums going yeah i've got this um i've got this guy with me that's telling me he's got a headache and, and already this person has got their hand on their head so your body is a perfect instrument to translate these messages. So I believe when animals speak telepathically, you will kind of feel like you're making it up in your own mind. So you might think, oh, I've just said to my cat, how are you feeling today? And you might get like, yeah, I feel really good. And then you wow. might think, I've just made that up because that's the answer that I would have liked. I would want my cat to say, yeah, I feel really good. Do you know what I mean? And it's about trusting that information. Now, the hardest thing I think to do when you're learning how to do it is talking to your own pets because you kind of anticipate the answer because you already know that animal so well. And also you're emotionally attached to them. So you, you might be a bit frightened, you know, what if they say they don't like me or I'm feeding them the wrong food or I'm not a very good owner. You know, you get all these negative thoughts in your head thinking, oh, I don't want to say anything in case I get the answer I don't like. And that's because you are attached to them and yet you're worried about things. So if you could imagine that you could take that side of it out of the equation, then the quickest way and the easiest way to learn is to communicate with somebody else's pet because you're not emotionally attached to that animal. So therefore, you're kind of a bit more open-minded and you will allow in what needs to come in and then feed that back to that person. So it's always good practice to have a go with somebody else's pet, even if it's um, out and about on a walk and you just happen to see a dog, for instance, you could just say in your head, hey, I can talk to animals. Can you hear me? And sometimes the dog goes, woo, and like looks around or does something really Amazing. weird. And that's quite good fun to try. But it purely is activating it by having the intention that you're sending that thought out to them and you're intending for them to hear it. And that kind of activates the whole process. And it's just really about acknowledging then what comes into your head so it like i say words phrases feelings um emotions pictures and you will get all that you might get words first pictures later or a feeling or any order or a combination but you will feel a bit like i don't know i'm thinking it it feels natural it feels normal but i don't know why i'm thinking it because I wasn't thinking that before. And this is where people fall down because it's so natural. It feels like you're making it up. You just think that that's what you're doing. You just think, oh, no, I've just made that up. And that is where people um, say that they can't do it. Well, and it's just, it's just acknowledging that, really. And once you acknowledge that and you're brave enough to say to somebody, look, has this happened with your dog or has your cat just had an eye infection or whatever it might be once you you know you are brave and you have the courage to say it because let's remember 
medium psychics, animal communicators often are frightened of getting it wrong. And that can stop you saying things to people. Once yeah. you find that courage and then you've had that information validated, that boosts you on. And so you've got to start somewhere with it. And that's a really good place to start. I do have to add, though, to that. I mean, I did mention like all oh, your cats, you know, if your cat had an eye infection or something. We are not vets. And by law, we have to work in the veterinary act. So we're not allowed by law to make a diagnosis or a prognosis. So if anybody does ask me about their pet today, I'll certainly tell you what I feel psychically, but I have to always recommend you go and see the vet if it's of a medical nature. That's right, yeah. Um, Jane, Jane Dealey actually did your course. She did. Jane yes, Dealey did my course. Yeah, she really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you, Jane. Is she listening in? Is she? What is she watching? Yeah, she's watching at the moment. Uh, Tina Coleman, thanks for watching. Oh, uh, hello, Aaron Tina. from Malaysia, thanks for watching. Hi, Christine A. Parkin. Hi, Terry Coops. Hi, everyone who's watching. Just trying to go. Danny Coleman, Sarah Edwards. Thank you, Joanna Hemming. Uh, Stanislav Sophia. Thanks for watching, A Saw. Thanks everyone for watching. Oh, that's so lovely. Thank you. Yeah, so Psychic Beth, um, she does mediumship, but also animal communicator. Um, you brought out a book as well, haven't you? Two. I did. That was in 2017. I was uh, channeling a book, which is called, I don't know if you can see that, if I'm holding it correctly. It's called Life by Numbers. Um, it's available on Amazon. If you head over to Amazon, put Life by Numbers, Elizabeth Barber, it's on there. Um, I was very much into numbers and I still am. And I believe that the spirit world send us messages through numbers. I'm very aware that a lot of people um, come to me for a reading because they feel lost or they feel stuck or they feel confused. And I very much was thinking, how can I help people with a book when they're in those parts of their life where perhaps they don't know what to do and they need a bit of guidance and maybe, you know, they, they're not ready to have a reading or maybe they're just curious as well about what to do about something. And Spirit told me there was something called the universal number attraction, which yeah. I'd never heard of. And they said, although there's lots of angel books with, with angel numbers, it's very different for, to angel numbers only because it kind of focuses more on your everyday life and it's a book which is not fluffy at all it's very straight to the point so it can be about any area of your life it can be quite hard hitting at times because it kind of cuts through the uh, rubbish if you like and go goes in into a certain thing and they told me what each number meant um and that's one to a thousand numbers so maybe you've got a favorite number maybe the clock keeps saying three 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 or maybe you're driving along and you see your initials on a registration number plate you need to look at what the number is maybe you keep waking up at a certain time or maybe you i don't know you keep seeing the number 32 whatever it is you need to look it up in the book and see why that number is being presented to you. The other thing I like to do, Jackie, which is really fun, and I don't know if you can see this. This is my bowl of a thousand numbers, which basically is a thousand raffle tickets in here. And, wow. um, and often I like to just say, oh, I'll pull you a number out. And I'd love to do that for you, Jackie, if that's all right. For me? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'd number love to. 12. Yeah. You'd like number 12? Yes, please. Okay, I'm going to read out what number 12 is for you, but also I'm going to read out what 658 is for you as well because I've just pulled that out of my number wow, bowl. thank you. So if I look at both of those, they may well tie in together and make some sense for you. So, so number 12 um, says, stop and think about your actions Avoid addictive behaviours and stop procrastinating. You're getting stuck in a rut and it's time to get out of it. Failure to do so will result in you feeling frustrated with a low mood. 
By adopting a new proactive routine, zest and vitality will be restored. And I know straight away when when I look at that, I know, again, it does sound a bit hard hitting, but I don't know if you've been feeling like really tired and sluggish lately. And uh, and I feel like you're going to go into a time, particularly at the end of September, beginning of October, where you start to feel better. Also, I don't know whether you've been adapting a new style of eating or drinking as well and starting to feel healthier as a result of it. But that is being supported and encouraged. I feel that there's an opportunity coming in for you around about the 23rd of October. I'm being shown and kind of all this work that you've been doing is going to be a fantastic platform in order for you to accept this opportunity. And I feel like don't be stuck when you think, oh, no, I can't do it. I'm a bit scared. Remember that message in a book. I'm not to get stuck in a rut. I've got to come out of my comfort zone. I'm going to have a look at 658 for you. And let's see if it ties in and makes sense for you as well. And 658 says, we all make mistakes and we wish we handled things differently in certain circumstances. Stop persecuting yourself over things that you cannot change. It's time to move forward without a self-sabotaging attitude. It's time to be full of optimism about your future. And as I look at that, you know what? I just feel like you are really hard on yourself and like you're your own worst critic. I bet yeah. you watch this back and you go, oh, no. Why did I no, say I that? No, I can't watch it. Exactly. You won't watch it. I can't it. watch it. it- <laughs> As soon as I hear my voice, I think, no, I can't watch this. There you go. It's exactly that. And it's saying, look, be proud of what you've achieved. Be proud of what you're doing. Be optimistic about the future. But, yeah, so that's kind of how it works. So sometimes it, like, it hits you quite hard, that book. So it's really useful because sometimes when we're stuck, we need a bit of a push, and the book yeah. is really good to push you in a favourable direction. Wow, that, that's fantastic. Um, Jane Dealey says it's spot on every time. So, oh, thank you, Jane. That's yeah, really Jane's kind. Yeah, Jane's, Jane's got the book. I sent it to her when it was released. She ordered it, and, and uh, yeah, I know she's got the book. I think she's. I think Jane. Have you got my cards, Jane? I if she'll answer. I, I did those, and, and they're really good at looking at the future really good for a bit of um guidance to what is coming up for you because sometimes we need to look ahead to stop us looking back because we can get tied in to what has happened why it's happened we can feel sorry for ourselves because of what's gone on in the past and often to turn that around if we focus on what's going on now and the you know the availability of what we could be doing in the future and how to implement that into our life again it gives us that wonderful shove out of our comfort zone and pushes us um, into something really magical and something really special and I think that that's really important especially at the moment when we've all been a bit down and scared and afraid it's really good to start thinking about you know what what am I going to do who am I and what do I want to be at the moment and where can I take it so I just think that there's a lot of opportunities for people uh, because of the lockdown I think we've got to see that as a bit of a platform to reassessing where you at where you're at in your life at the moment yeah it has been a time for thinking about things definitely because you've had more time, um, even that's not, what it um, is, yeah. not doing the two-hour commute every day. No, well, it's just is like it. an hour each way, isn't it? But it's still time. Lifestyle. And now it's like doing other things. Yeah, lifestyle yeah. has changed so much for many people. You know, it's um, it, it can be it can be a scary time. It can be a bit like, oh, my situation has changed dramatically. I don't know where to go or what to do. So I'm getting a lot of people at the moment who are having readings purely to look at where they can go from here, how they can change perhaps their job because their job has come to an end or their job has changed, you know. So because they were doing one thing, that job may no longer exist. So they've had to take their skills and transfer them onto something else and of course 
we can be frightened of doing that. We can be reserved. We can be scared of, of because we don't know a new job or if we're going to be good at it. But, you know, we can surprise ourselves as well. And I think looking at cards and the book, it supports you. It guides you favourably. Yeah. Um, I've got a message here from uh, Sarah Adwards. Sarah Redwood says she gets 11.11 out a lot and she sees it almost daily. Interesting, because I know I don't have 11.11 in the book, but I do have 11 and I do have 1.11. So if we look at those for her, that would be quite useful. Um, so let's have a look at 11. Oh, no, Sarah, don't tell me off when I tell you what this is all about. <laughs> vehicle Vehicle problems could be an issue. Ooh. Remember, a stitch in time saves nine. So get work done on your vehicle or any that you oversee, as this will prevent hefty bills in the future. So, Sarah, if you've got like a little rattle or a little thing going on with your car at the moment, don't leave it thinking, oh, don't do what I do. Just turn the radio up so you can't hear it. That's what I do. <laughs> don't do that, Sarah. Like, That's get it, it. checked. So let's look at 111, which is an interesting number. Now, um, it says, look past the illusion. Just because someone says they're genuine doesn't mean that they are. Uh, the mask is slipping from someone around you and you will start to see them in a new light. Do you know what? I get around that, Sarah. I feel that somebody in the past has like really disappointed you or even maybe been quite mean to you in a very unnecessary way. And I really want to say to you, it was not your fault. Um, and I think that you're the kind of person that like holds things in or digests it and blames yourself. And I really feel like spirit is saying like, you need to come away from that now. You need to move forward. Focus um, on relationships and good relationships. Um, also, you're not very good at saying no and spirit is saying to you look only do something if you really feel it's right it is okay to say no because they show that you people please um a lot of the time before you put your own needs first you're thinking about somebody else and it's a time for you now it's a time where you're going to be studying something new they tell me 17th of September is going to be quite significant. It's either the 16th or the 17th of September that they give me. And that's going to be quite significant for you, um, Sarah. So do mark that on the calendar. Um, and I just see, like, as we go around the 2nd of December, I'm just going to have a look at these cards, actually. Because they're telling me, like, have a quick look at these for the 2nd of December. Ooh, one, I don't know if you could see that on camera. One, like, shot out. And then you've got this card that says, notice the signs. I don't know if you can see that. Um, now, notice the signs is very much saying around the 2nd of December, you need to be very aware of any opportunities that come in, um, things that come through the post, anything that has got a form of an invitation. Do not pass up an invitation is what they're telling me to tell you, Sarah, because that could lead to great things. I just feel as you go into next year that actually so many things will change for you. Don't be frightened. Just welcome it in and life will improve and get better. Um, Going to sound random. Did some pot plants just go outside your front door? Or have you been Ooh. doing... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I can't see the comments, uh, Jackie, because... I can't, they're only small. So I don't know if she's answering. You'll have to tell me. Yeah. Um, Sarah does say, um, this is one of the comments, um, when you first started giving the reading, she said you were spot on. So that's fantastic. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thanks for your feedback, Sarah. So that's amazing. Hi, we've got Wild Bill on. We've got Danny Coleman, Nick Millay, who's going to be a guest. Um, Oh. at the end of the month so that's gonna be awesome oh hello um, Danny hello <laughs> <laughs> and um let's have a look so Sarah had been trimming some lavender outside a front door yesterday spirit know about it Sarah they're watching you but in a good way <laughs> in a good yeah, way you've got to be careful Sarah <laughs> careful what you're doing <laughs> Oh, no, that's amazing just to get, you know, spot on and that, that is awesome. Has anybody else got a quick number? We'll take one more person. We've got Valley Spirit Communication here as well from California. Thanks. Thanks, Tammy Petty. 
So can we have one more request for a number, please? Between us, one and a thousand, is it? Yeah, one and a thousand. Uh, Sarah Edward says, thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Nice to meet you, Sarah. Right, okay. No request for number. There we go. Jane Dealey has given me the number 33. Oh, I know straight away that's something to do with work on a house, 33. Let's have a look. Uh, it's about property 33 is, um, Jane. Let me find it in the book. Hold on. Okay, it says property management, house redevelopment and building work is something that you're good at. Um, a new challenge is on the way. Grab this opportunity as it will bring financial rewards. Um, have you moved yet, Jane? Because I just they're just saying, come on, pack your boxes, get everything in order. And I feel that where you'll be or where you're going will require DIY and don't let that put you off because it's something that you can sort out. It'll be absolutely fine. Um, I feel that there will be uh, a reason to have a plumber um, as one of your friends, really. Almost like the boiler isn't quite right there or it will require work on the boiler. So do remember that. Don't just think, oh, it'll be all right. Get that checked if it hasn't already been done because they're telling me that's quite important. Um, I don't know whether you've been having um, an issue. Uh, they keep showing me, and it's going to sound really weird. Is your exhaust blowing on your car, Jane? Have you noticed it being really loud? Uh, it's almost like I can hear your car from here. It's almost like they're making it quite loud for me, which would suggest something like the exhaust or something like that. So um, is your car white? They show me a white car or you'll be having a white car if you haven't got it already. Um, they're talking to me about the 25th of April. So I don't know if that's somebody's... Uh, birthday or anniversary but if not then do put that um, onto your calendar for next year as a date of significance and it's like they take a note I know it's really hard like to go on the train and things like that but they keep saying you'll be going to the big smoke you'll be going um to the big city and just be prepared for that because it's an outing that you need to do and they've just given me this card for you which is see past any obstacles and what really gets you down is if something just isn't falling into place and going your way and spirit is saying look Try not to see it as an obstacle that's not going your way. Just work out how to overcome it because that's all about problem solving. Um, you're good at negotiating with people. But what I will say to you, and I don't know whether this has happened in the last two weeks, that you've had a bit of battle over something or somebody's been really hard work to get hold of or somebody's been really hard to get things sorted out for you. I kind of feel that that has given loads of frustration or you've a bit of anger there. Um, so just move from it, do some meditation or something really nice um, like that. So I hope that's helped you. I'm sorry, Jackie, I can't read the comments. Yeah, so that's um... more... There's a couple I want to mention. Jane says um, she's packing for a move on the 25th. And also, Brilliant. she has a white car. Oh, there you go, Jane. At the moment. So, spot on, and thanks <laughs> for that. Um, <laughs> Cammy Petty says, you're so talented. Oh, thank you. Um, That's very kind of you. We'll, we'll take the last question. Um, sorry, I've got an issue with my bird. What sort of bird is it? Um, cockatiel. He's talking to me. He's very happy. <laughs> He likes it because you've got an animal communicator on your show. <laughs> yeah, hey, Stewie. What's his name? It's called Stewie. He keeps showing me the number 12. He keeps showing oh, me 12. Wow. Is he 12 or why is he showing me 12? I'm not sure how old he is, to be honest. He keeps showing me the number 12. And, number 12. Um, this is going to sound really weird. Like, have you got a problem with your doorbell? Is it not working? I haven't got a doorbell. Ah, but he, he acts like my doorbell. Oh, okay. Because he keeps showing me. He always hears me. You mean he makes a noise if you're at the door? Yes. When, when oh, the okay, car pulls up. Um, then that's what he was saying. Um, oh, it's fine. I think he's sorted. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, <laughs> Well, it's such a funny noise. It sounds like a squeaky chair. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just tell him to be quiet for the show. 
Oh, it's so oh, funny. Okay. Bless him. I love birds. I've got a parrot and uh, he's gorgeous. I've got a parrot. He's about 46, something like that now. And uh, he's great fun. Lovely. I love birds. Yeah, he, he is amazing. He's quite a character. But no, um, he does hear when I'm outside, when I pull up in the car. And also, um, if my neighbours arrive next door, he does hear them and let me know as well. Well, he wants so, to tell you the name of Rob. Robert or Ron? He keeps showing me R-O, R-O for a name. Ron. It's Ron. And he knows about Ron. That's what he's telling me. He says, I tell her I know all about Ron and what's happened. It's my dad. Oh, that's really yeah. lovely, isn't it? And so he's, wow, just thank bring, you. he's just bringing that link really close to you. And animals are really good at doing that, linking somebody in to you so he's like the go-between if you like and he also wants to prove to you that he's very knowing he's very psychic himself he says what's going on with your curtains what are you doing with your curtains um so i don't know if you're renewing them i don't know but he keeps saying that uh, he likes to be in a lot of daylight so yeah. i know I, I don't know whether you've been shutting them thinking that he will be hot i don't know but he's saying something about that um there, he's also I don't know with your dad. Did your dad like have something wrong with his right leg? Oh, what? he had a cartilage issue oh, years okay. ago. I don't know much about that. Okay, because I know that in life there was something about the right leg. And I feel as though um, that there is also somebody else in the spirit world. Um, get, this is going to sound really mental. Did anybody lose part of their ear or have like... Um, some i don't know what that is like a prosthetic ear or like something about the earlobe or is anybody watching that somebody like had that because there is somebody coming through now from spirit and they're trying to get a message to either you jackie or somebody who's watching this broadcast and the way that you'll know it's for you because it's such an unusual it's like weird it's making me go a bit funny it's almost like they clip the ear on like a false ear like a prosthetic ear um can you let us know if you're watching and that makes sense because it's like so it's like it's been lost like i know i know this is silly but um there's a lady who's going to watch the show afterwards she can't okay. actually make it and she's had her ears clipped back ah it could well be that then well she's meant to watch it then because it's and like she did ask, know about it she did actually ask for number nine but I, really? I didn't really want to ask because there's a lot of people on the show. So you, I didn't want to ask for a number, but it's strange. Oh, let's the do spirit. number nine. <laughs> well, it must be spirit knowing about the ear thing. And perhaps that's why I could see it like being clipped on. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. perhaps they had to re realign it or something. When they, I don't know. I don't know what that surgery involved. But it's just a weird it. thing that, that I could see. But I'm going to do number nine anyway. So if she watches it, she can have the number. It says, be honest, tell the truth and speak out. Keeping things bottled up is causing you great stress and anxiety. Have a chat with a friend, uh, meditate, relax and gain perspective as you will find that you have blown things out of proportion. Oh, wow. but there's something that she needs to share. She, she's not communicating effectively. Do you know what? She's just got to tell somebody how she feels. Oh, oh bless. Please. We need to have an after sometimes anyway, so that'd be absolutely awesome. Thanks well, let's for that. Hi, Nan. Thanks for joining us. Talk to you about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's just absolutely amazing because, you know, she asked for the number nine, but I thought, well, you know, there's a lot of people watching the show and people want numbers. So, you know, I just try and be fair and stuff. But yeah. Sorry. You know what, Jackie? <laughs> Spirit have their own agenda. <laughs> 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 They always do. Uh, Tammy says that the bird's adorable. I actually, um, my friend gave me the bird when I lost, lost my other dog. Aww. So the bird wasn't getting on with the parrot. So um, he came to live with me. So, yeah, he's amazing. Aww. And, yeah, he's so chirpy. And, like, yeah, when I do arrive home, you can always hear him say well, hello. He's, he's pleased to see you, which is lovely. He is. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, yeah, it's all good. So we've only got like 15 minutes left. So it's been a really amazing show. 
Um, I also know that you've done a bit of paranormal as well. Yeah, I haven't done it for quite some time, but I have kind of uh, been to uh, done a done something at the Station Hotel. I've done two or three events there in Dudley, which is quite well known um, as a paranormal uh, place to go to. And I've been down Drake Low Tunnels twice doing paranormal investigation, which is just on the outskirts of Kimber. Um, in Stourbridge, that is an amazing experience to go it down those amazing. tunnels. It is amazing. there, yeah. Have you been in? It yeah. Is, it's Absolutely just awesome. It's just something else. It really is. I've been to the Skirid Inn. I've been. I can't remember. I've been to somewhere in Tamworth, but I can't remember where it was now. Um, I've been to lots of different places. Um, I like doing it. I tend to do them for charity. But I don't feel that it's my speciality, although I've enjoyed it, got lots of info. Um, I'm not very good at, um, oh, I've lost you. I don't know if you can still hear me. Yeah, I can oh, hear you. Sorry, I lost you then. Um, but, but I feel that, uh, sorry about that. My phone no had a little bit of a meltdown. Um, but, yeah, it's. I'm very good at working alongside other people and with people, but I do find it hard sometimes with the paranormal groups because what what I'm not really into is sometimes you feel like you're in, trying to get a reaction or annoy the spirit world. Yeah, and I, I'm yeah. not into that. Like, I like to reunite people with their loved ones, put their animals and, you know, people and pets together and, and give people information. So I love working on a one-to-one -one basis with people. And That's I found okay. that when I was doing investigations, I would end up like talking to one person and having a little chat about what was going on for them. And then conscious that, oh, there's all these other people over here. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of, I like to teach workshops and, and get people to really look at where they're at, like with their psychic development or with their um, animal communication. I love teaching. Um, and I love doing readings on a one-to-one -one basis and, and doing the stuff on my radio. But I would not not do it if somebody asked me. But it's not something that is my driving force within this work, if that makes sense. Yeah, but, well, everyone's got their own path, haven't they? Yeah. And yeah. everyone finds their own way. And certain times, you know, you go into different directions. But it's just like what suits you. and It's all different, isn't it? I love to go into a building and get the sense of who's lived there, what's gone on. And very often um, I'll feel like if it's it can overcome me and I feel like, oh, my God, I can't stay here. I've got to get out because there's so much that I can pick up and feel. So sometimes I get a little bit like that where I feel it, it's so strong. And maybe that kind of pushes me um, away from it slightly because I just feel like, oh, my God, it's all going on you know, that kind of thing. But I have got like a healthy interest in it. But I feel like my biggest pull to this kind of work is really trying to help people, help people with their lives, what they're going through, support them if they're going through challenges. And I just feel that we've all got our own area of expertise. And I don't feel that I'm an expert on the paranormal stuff, although I enjoy it and I'll get stuff. I don't feel that I know enough about it, really. All right. I've got an interesting um, question from Tammy Petty. Has okay. anything ever followed you home? No, not that I think, not, not that I know of. And I certainly haven't come across it. Um, if you mean like an entity or like an unwanted spirit, I very much when I've done anything like that, I've completely shut down afterwards. Right. I can honestly say I've been in some of the spookiest places in the UK, yet I've never really felt scared because I've never felt that there was anything that was deliberately going to cause me an issue or hurt me or anything like that. Um, I've witnessed different things, noises, um, typical kind of experiments that have worked and shown evidence and orbs and all that kind of thing. But I, I've never felt, no. And, and I, I kind of think this. I think that I don't invite it to, to come home with me. I don't believe it's going to come home with me. So maybe I just shut it off. Maybe if you're more open, that it could be a possibility that then it would come with you. Um, that's the way I look at it. I, I, I just think, no, it's not going to come home with me. It can stay. Why, why does it want to come home with me? 
yeah you know what, what benefit is that is that to to whatever it is that's amazing hi angela landa thanks for watching um tammy says you have lovely energy oh thank you and that's, that's really why she asked, she asked the question oh, so has anyone else so got any more questions we haven't got oh here we go um what's the question from christine i'm just trying to christine has a question i'm just trying to find it um if if you can post christine's question sarah that'd be great uh we'll try and ask that one um in the meantime from tina coleman her sister from the states sent her a bear when i held it the name simon came to me can you pick anything up about him please oh how lovely that you got you got a nice little gift well, maybe you you will be coming across somebody called um, Simon there, Tina. Um, I just feel more that you're very much on a spiritual path and maybe Simon is coming in like in a spirit guide form for you. Um, are you getting into anything where you're joining a circle or doing anything of that nature, whether it's online? I know it's a bit tricky in person at the moment, but you may, be, may well be encountering that guide. Or I just feel like Simon will be very relevant and very significant um, to you in the work that you are doing. Um, it's really strange. Um, are you having like new carpet or new flooring put down tina because i feel like there's somebody linking into you from spirit and they're watching like where your feet are walking on the floor so i don't know if you've just been looking at something you know some brochures or whatever that is uh but they're talking about new flooring new flooring i feel as well that um you have been I know like we're we're like having quiet times over lockdown or most people, but I feel like you're running around and you need to make some time um for you and to explore where you go from here. And they keep showing me writing. So I don't know if you've been thinking about writing a magazine article or a book, but writing is gonna be very therapeutic, but you will find that you're quite talented in that area. I want to give you the name Amanda and they may well call this person Mandy for short and uh, draw close to that person when they come in. You've got um, an interesting card as I've said about the writing because you've got be creative and, and learn something new there. So I don't know if you can see that and that, and that really creation, creating and, and also the other thing that I would suggest when I look at that card for you um, Tina, are you doing any crafty summit with craft? Because you need to get things down and, and nurture the crafty side of you. Have you been making somebody a card, for instance, or a picture? But doing something like that is going to be perfect. I keep seeing like two dogs running around. Have you Tina's got answered. Dogs? Tina's answered and said that she needs a new stair carpet. She said it was new stair carpet. She needs a new stair carpet. Oh, she needs a new stair carpet. Which confirms what you said straight away. So that's well, absolutely to, amazing. Tina, they're telling you, go for it. Get some new carpet then. Perhaps you've been holding back and thinking, oh, can't really afford it. Or, you know, it's a bit of a funny time for anybody to come in and fit the carpet. But no, they're saying just go for it because it it'll, it'll just freshen things up and it'll make you feel better. And on the craft side, she's going to have a go. And she has two Frenchies. Yeah, I feel like with the dogs, one of them, I get like really sore pads or sore feet. So can you check though? Can you check them and make sure like one, like the nails aren't too long, which they probably aren't, but just check like in between the toes. Um, It's like the soreness or just check there's nothing amiss in that area of the body. It uh, feels like a front foot um, on the right hand side. So if you could check them, because I don't know which one it is. And then the, the one of them makes me feel like they're um, re being really finicky with food. I don't know if they've been nauseous or been sick, but it's like the change of food would do them a lot of good. Obviously, I'm not a vet, so I can only recommend you see a vet. But if you could just check those out and maybe you could let us know. 
All right, thanks for that. I don't know what happened with my dog then, but it was on the settee and it was just freaked out twice and got oh, out of the room. I'm freaking all the animals out tonight. No, I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah, he's left the room now. Um, just one last question. We've got five minutes left. I want to thank you for everything and the readings. Um, just a quick question from Christine A. Parkin. She wants to know if a German Shepherd Beckett female is going to be okay. Is there any indication, really? Well, what I get initially um, about this German Shepherd is almost like uh, I feel like my back goes funny um, and my almost like my legs feel really weak at the back so I don't know if your German Shepherd has been having difficulties um in the spine or with the back legs but it's almost like as soon as I link in I want to dip down um like that obviously I'm not allowed by law to give any kind of prognosis because I'm not no. there, so I have to be really careful but I feel there's things that can be done um also feel a bit of an issue in the tummy area as well and, and I don't know whether she's been drinking more so maybe the kidneys are not in balance as well um at the moment so do just mention those things to the vet and do let let us know if that was helpful and do you connect to anybody called Colin uh because like they're giving me the name of Colin so do remember that that has come through um also oh that's lovely uh, I want to thank you for watching Danielle Griffin from Australia good morning to you um uh, nicola thanks for watching good evening to you um it looks like nicola's had so uh, it's really relaxed in the flat the past few days and she's had no strange things happen do you know nicola tillotson no i don't know who nicola is no right okay so it looks like she'd been having some activity but now things have like eased off um, Danny Carmen wants to know if you can communicate with all pets. He has four chickens. You can communicate with any pet. All pets have souls, um, whether that's a lizard or whatever. Um, chickens are, are always a lovely thing to um, communicate with. Um, I feel that there's one particular chicken, Danny, that absolutely loves you. And I don't know if this chicken is like following you around and like, come, don't leave me. And I don't know whether you've got these chickens like rescued, but it's like one feels really nervous. Like it's like, whoa, don't come near me, don't come near me. But one is really like taken to you and is right like, gentle and beautiful soul. I think that you're doing really well. And I, and I don't know whether it's because you've never had chickens before, maybe, but you're learning all about them all the time. And it's almost like you are digesting so much stuff trying to research trying to find out all about them and i feel like that's going to expand that you're going to really be a bit of a chicken head and you're going to really get into it with different breeds and and things like that i feel it he says really... yeah yeah he's, he's gonna yeah. tell you what Spot you're on. just gonna you're just gonna go like mad on it like you'll be youtubing it and you won't just like be satisfied you'll just want to know more more and more and and you're kind of you know you're gonna end up as the chicken man and you're gonna end up with more and more so i hope you've got plenty of space i feel like you're doing so many things right and that they're really happy and and as they show me clairvoyantly their home it's beautifully clean you must be cleaning it all the time and keeping it really fresh and and really gorgeous there but they they seem really happy to me and you've just got this one that really wants to come in the house and like cuddle up with you it just feels like more of a dog than a chicken it's almost oh, like, like so affectionate so can you let us know if that's the case but how lovely and is one of your chickens um got the initial b is the one like um beryl or something like that it's like a name like that that i'm hearing anyway um so do let us know um yeah he said one doesn't leave his side and one's really frightened yeah so isn't that lovely like. uh well we've got to go now we've got neil next but i want to thank you so much just been an amazing show thanks for oh, that thanks for inviting me it's been really great to connect with everybody thank you um danny said yes um he's confirmed what you've just said as well so that's absolutely Perfect. amazing oh thank you for watching the show and glad that oh, i was able to have that chance to communicate with your chickens that's brilliant um the the chicken is called blanche oh there and, you go uh, <laughs> have a wonderful day 
Um, Danny Coleman calls them the Golden Girls. Thank Aww. you for listening, everyone. Thank you for being a guest, Elizabeth. Thanks oh, a lot. Thank you for having me. And Neil's show comes on next. Thank you. Thanks for watching. And goodbye. Bye.